Hey there, fellow wackadoos! Hello again! Welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Q-Basic Asylum, where I should inform you that the video you are watching now will be submitted to the courts as proof that I have not, in fact, lost my marbles. Though I do have a screw loose. In any case, here we are, episode number 24, that's right, QBA 24, Attack of the Alien Bastroids. Ooh, sounds spooky. Let's check it out. Hang on. Here, 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 here we go. All right, so here we are. We got uh, QBA 24 fired up here, ready to go. Uh, what is this? Well, it says here, uh, QBA, QBA 24.base, that's uh, Alien Bastroids by Dr. Doodle, and of course, copied that for 2024. Uh, but, well, let's run this pig. Let's see what she does. Hang on. Right, here we go. Boop. Alert! 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 Stand by for incoming level 5 classified transmission in 3, 2, 1. Alright, here's the dealio. The Earth's been invaded by a bunch of alien bastroids. These evil baddies aim to do mean things to kittens and take candy from babies. Now, you've been called upon by the United States Nations to man the MOFO 10K plasma rifle and kick intergalactic buttholes. The catch is, each bastroid has a unique shield frequency, so the MOFO needs to be calibrated for a specific invader for each launch. If you clip the wrong one, it reflects your plasma energy back you and weakens your own shields. And that's just bad, so don't do it. Now, get out there and make your mama proud. Okay. I couldn't read that quick enough, but that's what it said. Now, so here we are. We got our alien See, bouncing around there. Look at here. We got, um, this is, uh, first, okay, here. There's, uh, Blorch. We got Skleeb next to him. Then Gronk and Chonk. And finally, uh, Snurt over there. Now, if you notice, like I say, you need to find the specific one. You can't just shoot at him. So down here, our current target is Chonk. All right, let's get Chonk. Uh, we use the mouse to move the uh, MoFo 10K here. And uh, there's go goodbye, Chonk. Now it's time for Gronk. You're done. Okay, Skleeb will take care of him. I'm sorry, that was Snurt. Now it's time for Skleeb. Goodbye, Skleeb. And finally, Blorch. Bloop. All right, so good work, Captain. But don't get too comfortable. Here comes the next wave. All right, so here we are in the back again. Uh, and uh, we'll try this again. Blorch. He's done. All right, time for Gronk. Goodbye, Gronk. Hey, Chomp. All right, he's done now. And Skleeb right there. Goodbye, Skleeb. And Snurt, finally. Okay, again, good work, Captain, but don't get too comfortable. Here comes the next wave. There they are again. You know, more of the same, really. It just, well, by the third or fourth level, you'll notice it gets, notice, well, noticeably faster. So uh, that's the thing. We just go till we can't. Here we go. Snurt, done. And Chomp, he's done. Uh, Skleeb. Oh, I hit Blart. Now, if you notice, I hit uh, Gronk instead of Skleeb, so my shields are now down to 90%. That's bad. Oh, we don't like. No likey. Well, we'll take out Blorch. Goodbye, Blorch. And Skleeb, there you got him. Now Gronk, he's done. And here we go. Okay, at level 4, we need to take out, take out Gronk. And Chonk, Snurt, Skleeb. Bye-bye, Skleeb. And goodbye, Blorch. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll just, uh, maybe I'll, I'll fast forward through here, but I'll, you'll get the idea. Hang on. Boom, let's leave. All right, here we are in level 12, and I think you can see they're moving much faster now, which makes it more difficult. And again, you just it, it's more of the same. There's no ending, no boss, whatever, but just play until you can't. So here, good. we're now at level 70 because I missed a couple. So here we go. Uh, let's take out Gronk if I can. Goodbye, Gronk. And Chonk. Uh, Skleeb. I got him. Blorch. Snurt. Now here's where, oh, damn, I missed one. It's, here's where it starts getting tougher because uh, it gets faster and faster. And they get close to get, oh, I got, oh, shield's down to 50. Notice it's yellow now because that's a warning. I only got 50% shields. So I better be careful and keep my mind on the game here. Got them guys. Uh, na, 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 na. Come on, fellas. Oh, oh, ooh, we're down to 20% shields. Ah! Come on now, it's up oh, 10%. One more, and ah, no shields at now. If I hit the wrong one, I'm done. Like, kaput. So here we go. Let's try and get Gronk. Come on, Gronk. Ah, got him. Good. Next, Snurt. Okay. And Chonk. Blorch. Oh, lucky. Now I hope I can get this through this one. Mm, chonk. Oh, no. Loser. You totally suck. Just kidding. You actually did pretty well. Your final score, 70. Well done there, soldier. Toodles. So that's our game. Let's see how this thing works, shall we? 
All right, so here we got QBA 24, our good old space shoot 'em up alien asteroids. And now I hear some of you out there thinking, now hang on, Dr. Doodle, I call bull poopy. You say this is a space shoot 'em up, but it happens right here in good old Earth. Well, to that I say, what do you think Earth is, huh? Eh, yeah, have you thought about that? Anyway, here we go. Boop. Uh, QBA24.base, that's the file, Alien Bastroids by Dr. Doodle and Copy Left 2024. And now, as always, we initialize our program, and of course the classic first line, def int A through Z, making sure all our variables are integer by default, speed the whole thing up. So we declare sub mouse funk, we've seen that, that's how we control the mouse or interact with the mouse. Now we've got another sub here, declare sub teletype, text. Uh, line feed and then pause. Now, you've, this is when you start the program, you see all the text going across. That's the teletype. Now, if you know, can, if you can hear it on the camera, but it kind of clacks like an old style teletype. And I have put that into the sub that I call teletype. How about that? So we'll talk about that later. But for next, we randomize the timer so that we never know, uh, for example, where they're, they're going to start, where the uh, asteroids will start out, and where which one we need to shoot first. That kind of randomize it and keep you on your toes. Next, shields equals 100, 100%. Delay 50, that's to, to slow it down. It's, that's the slowest when you first start out. It gets less as we go. Bullet active zero, bullet Y 200, sound equals one. Now that's SND sound. It's a, basically a Boolean, either one or zero, to tell, tell the compute basic whether to play sound or not. And sound is a string variable that says on. So when you change, you'll see down the bottom screen that it just says on or off. That's what sound is for. And our level is one, so back home. Now next we've got, we're just basically setting up uh, variables and such to start. Now we go sub splash. That's the subroutine that shows the splash screen. It shows all the text that you, you all the teletype you saw when we start up. Next level up. That's where when we uh, finish one level and it's time to go to level two, level three, etc. We come back back to here. Blorch active equals one. Scleave active equals one. Gronk active. I think you get the idea. We're basically, we're making all the the uh, asteroids active again after we've shot them so they're now not not active uh, x equals 10 x2 equals 70 x3 equals 140 that's the starting positions of the various asteroids uh, h equals 1 h2 equals 1 h3 equals 1 again horizontal well up here to the top now we dim blorch 62 sleeve uh, these are the i'm um, sorry these are the arrays that we hold the artwork for for uh, blorch sleeve gronk chalk and snert can't forget snert. And then over here is the, uh, and we got the, uh, what is it, the mofo. That's the, the down the bottom, our, our cannon we shoot. And then the bullets. We got a, a, a array for the bullets as well. Next, uh, key 15, uh, character 0 plus character 31. That is the, the S key. That Now that's that's not an S key. That's the scan code for the S key. So we set key 15. We're defining key 15. That's a user-defined user uh, key function key that we're using number 15 we define it as character zero meaning no caps lock no scroll lock number lock none of that's all off uh, plus character 31 again the scan code for s and key 15 on now on key 15 we go sub sound toggle guess what the sound toggle does it toggles the sound simple enough now we go to sub artwork and go sub targeting so those are the subject of the splash. Again, that just prints all the blurr you saw in the beginning. Put bastroid or I'm sorry, artwork that draws the actual that draws the actual bastroids and and the mofo. Uh, next targeting. Targeting is where it decides okay which which bastroid do we need to shoot at next here. So we got that subroutine. This way we can start with. Otherwise we would not know which one to start with. So we call that once. Now here's our main program. Do loop while in key is not character 27. So that's the escape key and until you hit the escape key it just keeps going, keeps, keeps going. And all we do really we go sub put bastroids to put them in their spot, put the mofo where it belongs and then go sub launch. That launches our missiles up at them. And when we hit the escape key or if we've, we've lost all our lives or our shields going down to nothing, then system game over. So let's look at our subroutine and see what they do. Alright, here's the splash and that uh, that's 
what we saw earlier that it's first of all sets the screen to graphics mode 13 that's a 320 by 200 pixels and a 256 color I believe now sleep 2 it just it waits for a second here two seconds actually sleep 2 uh, color 12 would make the, the the text kind of that light pink and it says for one to for Z equals 1 to 4 this means it's going to print four times and with text equals locate print text what is all this crap you say we start with text is just a blank space then we print text that's that's blank next text equals alert 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 and we print text so it's going back but back and forth between printing no text and alert alert no text alert just looping back and forth like that that's how it flashes alert okay now we print print a space color 12 that's that kind of aqua color that pukey blue and no one likes but i use it because no one likes it Text equals standby for incoming level 5 classified transmission in teletype text uh, 025. Now, what's happening here? We set the text to this string. Then we call teletype, and text is it's telling teletype, hey, print out this string. A zero is no line feed, and 0.25 that's the delay. So it prints that first section, delays a quarter second, prints the next delays prints the next delays and now if you notice here uh look here we have standby for incoming level five classified transmission no space there why is that well because when it prints out you'll notice it goes to classified and then the next line transmission if i put a space in there then transmission will have that extra space so i make sure no space there that way it, it comes it lines up with the front of the so you'll see what happens when we do it Next, teletype text. That's it. We print that text out. And finally, teletype three, two, one. Well, you saw that before. Now, uh, of course, no no line feed or carriage return on those. And a quarter second each. So it prints three, quarter second later, two, quarter second later, one. Boom. Now we clear the screen. Okay. Now. Here's where we print the text that you saw. All right, here's the dealio. The earth's been invaded by a bunch of blah, 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 blah. You saw all this. And again, notice the spacing here. Uh, here I've got like three spaces where normally I'd put one. And unique shield frequency. There's no space between unique and shield because unique ends up right on the end of the screen here. And then shield, bloop, wraps around. That way it, I get the right spacing. Uh, so then it just types all these messages you see. Tell it... It sets the first thing it does sets the, the string variables text one, text two, text three, text four, and text five. Then it teletypes text one, uh, one carriage return, and three quarter of a second. Tel teletype text two. It basically does as above, so below. Just prints them all out on screen. Uh, teletype and transmission. Uh, one carriage return and five second. Yeah, five seconds delay. Clear the screen and return. So, we've got our, our splash screen done, all the text that you saw. Now we're ready to start, actually start the game. But before we can do that, we need to do our artwork. We actually draw the, the asteroids and the mofo and everything else. First line here, screen 13, puts it into screen 13 graphics mode. Kind of redundant, we were already done that, but it doesn't matter. So we draw a line from there to there, yellow, the, the 14 is yellow. And this is the actual bullet. Now we get from here to there, bullet and put it in the bullet array. Next, with these lines here, all these, I paint everything else here, this draws the mofo, the, 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 the space cannon there, and all the way down to here, where is it? Yeah, get 9, 9 to 3 to 31 mofo, we put the mofo into that array there. Clear the screen. Mm. Here we're drawing blorch, all these uh, lines and piece sets and everything else. Now here, if you notice, we're drawing, if you notice, we got all these lines and, and P sets and everything else to draw a blorch. Well, Sklebe, Gronk, Chalk, and Snurt, they're all basically the same image, just a different color. So all we're really doing is we play, paint, we paint blorch another color for Sklebe, paint him another color for Gronk, save it in the Sklebe, save it in the Gronk, Chalk, Snurt, etc. Clear screen, go sub status, and return. Now, status... That just prints the uh, information, like the scores, prints your, prints your score up on screen, the, what level you're at, shield levels. Now here's the interesting, the shields. Now it, it's, it's a percentage of power. If you're from 60 to 100% power, no problem, color 10, that's green, you're good. If you're down to 30 to 50%, well, now we're gonna let, let you know, hey, we're yellow, 
it's a warning come on be, be, be careful and from 0 to 20 that's pink or light red really so as your your screens get weaker and weaker the color goes from green to yellow to red to let you know cool it man be careful here so that's how that's done print the shields print the sound on and off that sort of thing uh and if if blorch active plus cleave active plus gronk active plus chalk active plus nerd active equals zero then Clear screen, uh, teletype, good work, Captain, but don't get too comfortable. Here comes the next wave. In other words, it checks your status. And if you kill them all, if none of them are active, then you clear the screen, locate, good work, Captain, uh, don't get too comfortable, sleep for a second. Uh, level one is level becomes level plus one, so we're now on level two. Next time we're on level three, etc. Delay equals delay minus three. See, the delay, delay gets less and less each time. That's why it's faster in every every level. Uh, clear screen and go to level up, which we mentioned earlier. Level up is right there. Boop. Yeah, this so that's where we start again and uh, all that. What, what else do we need to see here? Scroll down here. All right, targeting. Here's where we decide which which uh, black asteroid we need to shoot at here. So we go sub status, and uh, that you just saw what status does prints everything about the screen. Locate print current target, and target equals one plus random times four. Now random that's just a random uh, number generator times four, so it'll be anywhere from like what uh, 0 0.0001 up to three point nine 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 nine. We add one, so we end up with either. What it truncates it to uh, to integer, so you, I mean, if this would generate say 3.7, well, it's it's uh, uh, integer by default, so it just chops off the, the the decimal part. So this number, this line right here, essentially gives us a, a number from one to five, and that selects which target we need to shoot at. So select case target. If case one, case two, case three, etc., we put if blorch active equals zero. In other words, if it's one, it wants you to shoot Blorch. But if Blorch is not active, it's if act, Blorch active equals zero, there's no point targeting him. He's gone. So we go sub targeting again. Basically, it just calls itself again. Let's try number three. If if Gronk is active, great, not a problem. But if Gronk is not active, then we go back to targeting until we find one that's active. But if it is active, else put Blorch P set locate and print Blorch. Now this is where it's printing them all down here on the bottom to show you there's the one you want to shoot and the name etc. All that does is just prints it down on screen so you can see what your next target is. Return, we're done with this subroutine. Uh, put Bastroids, I don't think I really need to spell this out too much. It just generates the locations, uh, the X and Y coordinates for the various Bastroids, uh, Blorch, Glebe, Gronk, Chonk, and Snurt. <coughs> Now, it creates all these, these uh, variables, all these coordinates, but it only puts the particular Bastroid if it's active. So if Blorch active equals 1, then P set Blorch. If Scleave active equals 1, P set, P set Scleave. In other words, if, it's, if they're not active, it doesn't put them there. It, you just end up with empty spaces. The one thing that I, I neglected to mention about the put Bastroids subroutine is this speed variable and how that all works. It could be a little confusing at first. But if you notice, we got the first line, speed equals speed plus one. If speed is greater than delay, then do all this and then return. But if it's not greater, just return. So in other words, the first time that the, we go through the loop, we call put bastroid speed equals speed plus one, so it's now one. If speed is greater than delay, which happens to be 50, well, then you do all this stuff. But one is not greater than 50, so it just returns. Next time through, speed equals speed plus one. Speed is now two. If speed is greater than delay, it still is not true, so it just returns. Next time through, speed equals speed plus one. So two plus one is three, four, five, around, around, until eventually reach 51. Now, speed is greater than delay. So we do all of this. We set speed back to zero. And we, we put the, 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 we set the directions of the, the, the Bastroids, whether they're going left and right, and we place them on the screen, etc., etc. Now, that, that happens until the um, speed is greater than delay. In other words, each time this activates, speed is set back to zero, so it needs to be called another 50 to 51 times to activate. And it called another 51 times to activate. That's, of course, the delay. That's why it's, it's slower than normal. Now you get to the next level, delay is no longer 
uh, 50, it's now 47. So we start with zero and add one, add one, add one until we get to 48. Then it activates and it just keeps going round, round, round. Every 48 loops in the, the program, this will activate. Again, that's why it's so slow. But as the delay gets smaller and smaller, this starts to happen faster and faster. That's what increases the speed of the subroutine. I hope I got that as clear as, uh, as I could there, but uh, I'm moving on here. Here we go. All right, well, now we come to put MoFo, where we're putting the MoFo on the screen there. And mouse three, again, you've seen this many times. Three, it just uh, reads the mouse coordinates, what keys, uh, what buttons if any are pressed and uh, acts accordingly. So now <laughs> MH that's the the mouse horizontal co coordinate divided by 2 because screen 13. Now if we don't divide by 2 the you, the mouse might be here but the curse, cursor up ends up over here somewhere. So divide by 2 just to calibrate. Now if MH is greater than MOFO X then MOFO X equals MOFO X plus 1. And if it's less than basically what's happening if, if the, the H position, the horizontal position of the mouse, is greater than the MOFO X, MOFO position, well then we add one to MOFO to chase the mouse. If it's less, well then we subtract one. It's basically chasing the mouse cursor around the screen. Now, if MOFO X is greater than 296, then MOFO X equals 296, so it can't go over the screen this way, off the screen this way. And we put MOFO X uh, 150, that's 150 pixels down, a MOFO PSAT. So in other words, again, we're just putting the MOFO where it needs to go. Simple as that. Next up, we come down to launch here, and launch. Uh, if B equals 1, if we've pressed the button key, and button active equals 0, then if, so if, if there's not already a, a, a missile in, in, in process here, or a bullet in process, then we, if sound equals 1, play the sound, bullet active equals 1, so we're making it active now, bullet X equals H divided by 2 plus 10, because it's, it's, the bullet is actually 10 pixels over from where the mouse is, it just makes it track better. Uh, if bullet is greater than 305, the bullet X equals, if bullet X is greater than 305, then bullet X equals 305, so it can't come too far over this way. Bullet Y equals 144 down here, and if. Now, if bullet active equals 1, then bullet Y equals bullet Y minus 2. What's happening is we're moving the bullet up by 2 pixels each time, minus 2. If point bullet X, bullet Y is not 0, then go sub-collision test. In other words, Right in front of the top of the bullet here, we're checking what color is that, what color is that, what color is that. Now, in open space, it's just black. But if you happen to hit one of the asteroids, it's going to be pink, gray, green, uh, blue, whatever. So if point bullet X bull Y is not zero, then you've hit one of the asteroids. So we go with sub collision test. And we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, put bullet X bullet Y, bullet P set. So if we'd hit one, we'd put the bullet again to get rid of it. We don't need it anymore. And if, if bullet Y is less than 11, then bullet active equals zero, so it doesn't just keep going up forever. Uh, line bullet uh, 15 zeros. In other words, it paints the bullet, but in black to get rid of it off the screen and return. So that's the launch. That's all that really is. Now here's the collision test. This is the word that does the actual logic of the game. <clears throat> T1, and you notice the little uh, uh, bang or, or exclamation point, that means this is not an integer by the fault. We're overriding this to make it a single precision. So it's not just one. It could be 1.789, whatever. So T1, and that's again, a single precision uh, floating point, equals the timer. So whatever time it is, that's how many seconds past midnight. And it could be 3,200,000 seconds, whatever. T1 equals timer one, do. We're looping now. T2 equals timer. Loop until T2 equal, is greater than T1 plus 0.5. What's happening? Well, first of all, here we set T1 to whatever the timer is. And now we loop until T2 is greater than the original time plus 0.5. In other words, all we're doing is we're waiting half a second. Now, we, I could just put sleep 0.5 in there again. Well, no, I can't because sleep only does full seconds. That's why I use this. If I wanted to do a quarter second with the sleep command, mm -mm, I could do one second, two, three, four, but no, no partials. That's why I'm doing this, so we can get a quarter of a second, three quarter of a second. Now, fail at hit equals zero. We're just assuming we haven't hit anything yet until we check, make sure that we have. 
uh, hit equals bullet point bullet x bullet y so that's wherever the whatever the color of this this bullet is that's the color of hit if hit equals 12 and target equals 1 then valid hit equals 1 blorch active equals 0 in other words if uh, let's see target 1 yeah target equals 1 if, if target is 1 then your target is blorched he's the pink one so if hit equals 12, if you've hit a, a pink pixel, and the target is pink, then valid hit equals 1. You've got a valid hit. Blorch, equals, Blorch active equals 0. He's no longer active. We take him off screen. Now say, for example, hit equals 12, pink, but target was 4. Well, that's I think that's the green. And then it would not be a valid hit because you've hit the wrong bastard. So if hit equals 12, pink, and target equals 1, Blorch, who is pink, uh, then that's a valid hit. Blorch active equals zero would take him out and then you score and all that stuff. And now same thing if hit equals six, that's the second color, which is a brown color, I guess. And target equals tar uh, Blorch, sorry. And target equals Sklebe, who is brown. Then you got a valid hit. And Sklebe active equals zero, etc., etc. You're just checking what color did you hit. Yeah, what is my hand? There. You're just checking what color did you hit. What color are you supposed to hit? If they match, good. That's a valid hit. If it's a valid hit, then we just draw the bullet in black to get rid of it. Score equals score plus one. Shields equals shields. Oh, otherwise, if you hit the wrong target, then shields equals shields minus ten. And again, we don't want to get down to zero. Minus zero, you're dead. Uh, and if clear screen, go sub status, go with sub targeting, both of which we've seen, and return. So again, if you hit any one of these, uh, basically we're ch with collision tests, we're checking what color is the point at the top of that bullet. If it's black, pfft, ignore it. If it's not black, well, what color is it? And what color is the target? If they match, good, great. You, you've hit your target, everything's good. You get score, etc. But if you hit one of the bastroids, but it's the wrong one, well, that's bad. You know, <laughs> Like we said, you got to hit the right one, and then your shields go down by 10%. So that's basically what the collision test does. Uh, sound toggle, pretty simple. Sound equals one minus sound. And we've seen this before, but in case you missed that video, what we're doing, we're set sound, the sound toggle to decide if we want sound or not. We're setting it to one, and then we subtract sound. So for example, if the sound happens to be zero, we go to the sound toggle, sound is now set to one, minus zero still one now we've turned the sound on now if the sound is on we go to sound toggle because we want to turn it off sound equals one, equals one minus sound which is one and one minus one equals zero so as you can see each time it hits this this toggle this uh, called the toggle assignment here each time it hits that it changes from one to zero to one to zero back and forth so if the sound equals one then sound on else sound off that prints it down here sound on and off and locate print sound etc okay so there's that and fanfare fanfare is oh, scroll down here fanfare is the end there where you, you've you've lost the game because you lost your, your shields and you hit the wrong one so clear the screen print teletype brrr, again that instead of just printing the screen it that prints it out like letter by letter uh, if we print out uh, teletype, loser, you totally suck, and we got a, a carriage return one, so it comes back here, space, I guess I should say, a quarter second, and print teletype, just kidding, you actually did pretty well, and your final score is blah, 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 uh, teletype, uh, well done, soldier, toodles, and that's it. Here we've got the, the enemy intel, um, important information you need to know about your enemies to keep you safe. So here we've got Blorch. Blorch, Blorch claims himself leader of the pack, though the others aren't aware that they are a pack. Uh, Skleeb fancies herself a beauty queen, uh, the rest just humor her. Gronk gets grumpy if his saltine crackers go stale. Uh, Gronk is Chonk's father. Chonk likes to chew her toenails, and Chonk is Gronk's mother. Don't else how that happens. I don't understand either. And then with Snurt, never quite fit in with the rest. He likes to recite poetry, and the rest are sick of hearing it. So there's that. Now, I think we've covered everything except the view, subs, mouse. We've seen the mouse many times. Again, the parameters. One displays the mouse cursor. Two hides the mouse cursor. And three reads the buttons and coordinates. 
Again, there any number. I think uh, I think episode ten is the one where we actually talked about how to use the mouse, and it's been used in a number of programs since. So check any of them out if you need more information. Now we go to view subs teletype. This is what causes the text to print out a letter at a time. I don't know if you can hear while I'm recording, but it's that little click, 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 click. Here, let's run this. Now listen closely here. Hear that? It's like the, the, the hammers on an old typewriter. Anyway, this is the teletype procedure. And as you see up here, it says this sub procedure simulates a vintage teletype display. It requires three parameters. Text is the actual text to be displayed. This can be in the form of a string literal or a, a string variable. Uh, after the text has been displayed, LF spe uh, specifies how many line feeds, if any, are desired, while P specifies how many seconds to pause in floating point format, so 0.3 seconds, uh, 2.9 seconds, whatever. All right, the next line here, it says sub teletype text line feed and pause. Now that's where we actually define the, 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 the parameters uh, sent to the, the sub procedure here. Next line is, is shared sound. That tells QBasic to share the value of the sound variable with the sub procedure. That way it knows whether you want sound or not. If it's one, it'll I'll play the sounds if not it won't now if we didn't put shared in there it wouldn't be able to, you couldn't control the sound you'd just hear the sound or not that was it that'd be it now I put this shared instead of into the the parameters here now the this is a global parameter that is seen everywhere in the program so if we had four five six a dozen different procedures you, you want the sound to turn on or off for all of them you wouldn't want one procedure playing sound while the other doesn't. You want them all to play sound or none of them to play sound. So I made it, it uh, use the shared to make it global. This way you don't have to put the parameter into here each time. It's one less variable to worry about. And all you're really concerned about with the text is what text it is, whether you want line feed, and what the pause is. You don't need to worry about the sound. It's just a, a, a extraneous thing, but in order to react to this variable, you make it shared. QBasic shares that, that variable with this procedure and any other procedure use this line here the whole point here is this teletype procedure should not be concerned with the sound all it needs to know is it on or off and making it shared makes this variable global so no matter where you are in the program no matter how many sub procedures you have they can all react you don't want one making sound while the other doesn't so we've shared our sound now for z equals one to len text lens the length of the text in other words, if your, your text string is uh, five characters, well, then this happens five times. If it's 50 characters, it loops through 50 one, one for each character. We go to print mid text. And let's take a look at mid. This uh, I think the help can explain a little better than I can. Uh, here, first of all. Did you, did you see me picking my nose? I'm not picking, I'm itching. It really, I'm just itching. Yeah. All right, so go to help mid. The mid function returns part of a string, a substring, and the mid statement replaces part. We're not using the statement, we're using the function. So in other words, you call mid the string expression that's either a literal, hey, how's it going, or the variable that holds the text that you want. You put that string expression there. The start is which character. You want to start with the first character, you want to start with the seventh, the ninth, whatever, and the length. How many characters do you want to read the first two, the second four characters, whatever. So mid, the first parameter, that's the string that you want to search through. Then where do you want to start? First, second, third character, whatever. And the length, how many characters? So we'll skate this out of here. And here we go, print mid text Z1. In other words, we are printing the, the first time through Z equals 1, so we print the first character and only one character we just want one at a time next time through z is now two so we print this second character and one character next time we print the third the fourth the fifth. this is what caused a brrr, print out like that and of course if sound equals one then sound 50 a quarter second sound equals zero else sound equals zero now the sound zero that that just uh, it shortens it. it instead of having it make long strings it's like a pip, 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 it just makes it sound a little more like a hammer. Tick, tick, tick. tick. So if sound equals one, then sound 50, that's the, the frequency, 
a quarter second, sound zero a quarter second, and then else sound equals zero. In other words, if the sound is zero, then no sound. Next, Z. So for each, each character in the string, we print the one, the next character, and if there's sound, we tick, tick, tick sound. We go to the next character, next tick, next character, next tick, or no sound. F or Z equals zero to line feed. Print a next Z. Uh, yeah, the line feed. That's how many, how many spaces you want to put in there. If it's zero, then you don't print anything. Uh, timer equal T equals timer. Do timer to. We saw this earlier. That allows us to delay less than a full second. So if we want to delay a quarter second, three quarters of a second, half a second, whatever. So that's basically all the teletype does. It just, it simulates an old teletype with brrrr, like you saw at the beginning of the screen. All right, now that pretty much covers the code of the program. Uh, now it's time for the boring stuff, the theory, uh, the uh, philosophy, if you will. Um, one of the tenets I came up with long ago was to write your own rules. Define your own style. Uh, for instance, uh, many of the commands have sort of a shorthand or, or shorter form that you can use. For example, if I wanted to type, if I wanted to print howdy on screen, I could type print howdy. Or I could just put a question mark howdy, and it's the same thing. The minute I move off that line, boom, QBasic automatically convinced that to print howdy. Now, if you want to just type in print, Knock yourself out. If you prefer the short form, like I do, just use a question mark. Likewise, we got an apostrophe here. Well, that's your mark. I could type REM, but for me, it's just easier to put the apostrophe. Plus, the apostrophe you could put at the end of a line, and it doesn't cause any problems. So those are the types of things. There are many commands that can have different forms, different formats. I feel you should try different different styles and different formats, see what works for you, and then use that consistently to generate your own style. Now, that being said, you can deviate from that style whenever you need to, uh, but as a rule, you generally want to be consistent and follow your own rules unless there's a good reason to. Now here, for example, if you notice, I put this code here in a sub-procedure instead of a sub-routine. Normally, uh, for the code that I write, I like to put all the code for a specific program in the subroutines. They're just easier for me to work with. Whereas a sub procedure, I will save for a per peripheral, like a mouse, like a printer, a uh, sound card, things that I want to basically, like, like a black box, I can just chunk into other programs and reuse from program to program. But things that are, are specific to one program or another, I will put those in subroutines. Normally, that's what I'll do. In this case, however, you can see I've created a sub-procedure instead of a sub-routine because I might want to use this teletype routine in another program. And there's nothing particularly in this procedure that is, that is specific to this program. So I put it in a sub-procedure, and if you notice the way back in episode, uh, well, was it uh, 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 21 and 12, uh, 21, 12, uh, but in, in episodes 21 and 12, I talk about uh, uh, libraries, generating libraries and, and reusing, uh, like I create a, a graphics library, I have the sound library, things like that. Basically, you're using code, so you haven't got to start re reinvent the wheel. So there's that. Now, aside from that, as far as games go, designing games, you could have something like a Wolfenstein or, or Duke Nukem, where you've got specific levels, different maps, and you go from level to level to level, you hit different bosses at the end of the level. Or you could just come create something like this. Basically, there's just one level, it repeats, and you keep going the next, the next, the next. It's the same thing over and over again, just gets faster. And you just keep going until you, you die. And it's a valid game. Now... If you wanted to, there's things we could do to spice this game up, make it a little more interesting. For example, when you hit the wrong, the wrong uh, uh, Bastroid, your shield level goes down. Well, maybe at the end of each level, you go back to 100%, or you gain 10% shield, so that after level to level, you can gain your shields back. That lets you play a little longer, makes it a little more interesting. Uh, what if after level 10, I decide, well, we'll make these guys shoot back at you? Then there's all kinds of things we can do. We can have a high score, uh, high score table. So uh, when you are at the end of the game, you can show off, hey, look, I got level, I got score 3 million in, in Bastroids. Show off to your friends, you know, and compete with other people. So there's lots of different options, different things to do. These are types of things to think about. Now, I'm not, uh, I don't intend to sell this program as, as a finished professional product. 
It's just a demonstration, really. But I could, as I say, add those features on it. I could put a, a high score table, a splash screen with artwork, asteroids. I could uh, copyrights on there. Whatever you want to do, there are many things to consider when you're writing a game a program and any program really. Uh, but the what's my point? Um, I guess the point of all this is that there are many ways to go about writing a game, or in fact a program of any kind, really. Uh, some my, Myself, for example, I like to just start throwing code out there, see what happens, and kind of tweak it as I go and design. I really hadn't thought too much about this game when I first started it. I just, oh, it would be cool if this happened, it would be cool if that happened. Other folks, they like to sit down and say, I want to design this game from scratch. Do I want levels or not? Do I want bosses or not? That sort of thing. Sketch it all out on a piece of paper. Have a flow chart, if you will. And uh, that helps to organize people's thoughts quite often. Now, the point, there's, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's whatever works for you. If you like the flow charting idea, the, the, all the planning, knock yourself out. And I like just to fly by the seat of my pants, so I do. I, I write something. Uh, this way, quite often, I've had ideas I would never have had if I tried to sit down and just you know, uh, plan or organize everything from the start. So try different ways. Try planning one step by step. Try just flying by the seat of your pants. See what works best for you. Uh, uh, I guess that's really all I have as far as code for this particular video. Uh, so next up is Superiors. <laughs> we got a great one this time, let me tell you. Uh, calls himself Timberwolf. You're going to love this guy. Wow. Mm. If I had his knowledge, I'd be rich like him too. All right, so here we go. Here comes uh, Superiors coming up. One second. Superiors! Superiors! All right, well, here we are at the, the YouTube channel of a fella calls himself Timberwolf, as you can see, and uh, he's got just about 50 videos, maybe a couple uh, more or less, whatever. Uh, and it's interesting stuff. It's not all code-based, but uh, pretty much vintage hardware of different sorts, vintage software. But we'll see. How do I find? Oh, I know. Uh, search right here on this channel for QBasic, and there are four or five... Uh, videos he's done about QBasic. Uh, the best one here, QBasic, it's history in my games. That one was great. Uh, uh, fixing my old QBasic games, artificial, intel artificial intelligence QBasic. It's history in technical error, or sorry, history in, in my games. But uh, yeah, so he's got, well, let's take a look at this one here. The history of QBasic and my history with it. This is uh, where he talks about some of the games that he had written back in the day. and <laughs> They started out pretty crude and Got less crude as he learned more, and um, well, it, it oh, that this one here was where was the race game that he was he had done? I think it's this video shows the race game. Oh, also it, it talks about uh, GW Basic a bit and how that all worked. And where can I find? I'm trying to find the one that I was looking at earlier, but he, he's uh he's got some interesting videos really. Uh, Again, stuff about QBasic, but also just, uh, well, there's one, let's see, where is it? Um, hmm, okay, the PC Wizardry, that was was cool. Uh, I like that that one there. The very first one I saw was pretty funny. Where is it? Uh, oh, I don't see it here now, but it's a game called Neosa, about a, like, like a, a, a handmade game all about old Santa Fe, Neosa. Uh, but in any case, he's got, uh, well, look at all his full videos here. So he talks about code, he talks about memory, so again, the hardware, different software. Here's the one he did about flight simulators, and <laughs> it's got jelly in it. You gotta check that one out, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, Timberwolf, he's, I guess he actually programs for a living, so he works with C and other, you know, more advanced languages, but uh, it's just, it's fun stuff. He, he's got sort of a warped point of view. There's Neosa, the weirdest game you've never seen. Uh, yeah, it's an old, um, what do they call that, a uh, simulator, I guess, where you walk through there and you get text-based messages and you at react to them, this sort of thing. Uh, go back here. Yeah, there's, uh, 
he talks about a railroad, I'm sorry, he talks about Roller Coaster Tycoon, which is uh, one of his favorite games, I guess, from back in the day. There's only like three or four that are based on QBasic, but uh, they're fun to watch and very interesting, a uh, lot to learn. He's also got, as I said, stuff about, he talks about the wrong type of memory, how that all works, the differences between emulated and expanded memory and why why things are the way they are. <laughs> a lot of it is historical, to tell the truth. Uh, you basically, they came up with one one standard, and then when they came up with new hardware, well, it still had to match the old standard. So that's uh, here's the best level he ever made. This is where he, I guess he was creating games, in, I'm sorry, levels in Duke Nukem 3D, which I have that. I have to try and see if I can create a level, see what that's all about. Uh, here's how they... they hid code in this particular game. They got all the code squeezed into just, what was it, uh, into a little bit of memory. Uh, there's Railroad pfft, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 uh, Demolition Simulator. That sounds like fun. Uh, how good is Midtown Madness 2 London? Uh, they ported it to what? Hard driving that from R arcade to ZX? All the versions I didn't cover. A lot of the stuff I'm not particularly familiar with because he's from Britain. He talks about British uh, British hardware. Uh, I guess the Acorn is one of the systems they had over there. And um, it, it, Populous. Oh, this one I had, the Catacomb 3D. I did have that game. I enjoyed that one quite a bit. Here's one about space travel. So it's just fun things, a different point of view. And, and there's some good stuff on, on QBasic. Uh, yeah, you'll... you'll uh, Check this out. I think you'll have a good time. He's <laughs> his his point of view is is a little bit slightly off, which I love that. You know, you, you got you, you will not be bored. I'll tell you that. You'll you'll find out a few new things and have some fun, and it's definitely worth a check out. Timberwolf, thank you for your hard work. This some great pages, some great stuff on here. Um, yeah, it. I tell you, you can learn from them. I have, and uh, I think you really enjoy it. So you got to go check out Timberwolf and. Uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, now back to the video, and I guess we'll, we'll wrap this thing up and send you on your way. Hang on a minute. Welcome back to the Asylum, the channel that asks the musical question, do you put a boot on your foot or your foot in a boot? All right, gang, well, there you have it. We've talked about the code for this program. I've talked a bit about some design philosophy, fun things to think about when creating a game or any program, really. Uh, yeah, try new things. Don't be afraid to try new things. Uh, something works for you, try it again. But don't be locked into one thing or one particular way of doing something. It, it there's, it's. If you're lucky, you're always learning something new, like I am. I, I've learned so much since I started doing these videos, and I'm just so thrilled to share with everyone else. Now we saw we saw the Timberwolf. That guy. Wow. That man. You can learn from him. Let me tell you something. I have. You know. I have. Uh, other than that, I, I've tried to explain my code as clearly as I could, though I'm sure it's clear as mud. Uh, but if you have any questions, as always, leave questions down in the, in the, in the thing or there. You can, uh, you, uh, well, don't forget to download the code. Don't bother typing this crap out. I already did all that work. So download the code, run it, have fun with it, tinker with it, see what you can come up with, all new ideas and such. Again, questions, or you just want to bitch at me about something? Eh. Tell me, I want to hear about it. Let me know what I can do to make this this channel better for for everybody, for myself included. Um, guess I got nothing else, so I'll let you go about your merry way and uh, enjoy your life. Hey, until next time, people. Hasta la pizza, baby. That about does it there. Guess that's a wrap. Let's shut this down. Okay. Ah, I lost my damn marbles. Ah. Seven ninety eight, ninety nine, one hundred, one oh one.